All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move our recipe and recipe ingredient models into the admin, much like we did with articles, so we can see, generally speaking, the direction we wanna go for our users to add this data in outside of the admin. So inside the admin, let's go ahead and import these. We'll do from, from dot models. We're gonna import each one of these like that. And then we'll just do admin dot site dot register of each one and copy and paste it. And there we go. Okay, so we save that. Let's make sure our server is running. Sure enough it is. And we'll jump in to our admin here. And in my case, I actually already have a recipe. So feel free to add one. Uh, but what we see, of course, is our users here. Now, this isn't any different than the article. The user did show up here. So in the admin itself, I actually have the option to manage this data, which is nice, but also not necessarily something I want, right? So I can actually make some changes to how I manage this data, very similar to the article admin, but I can actually add a whole nother feature in here. So I can say class and recipe admin takes in uh, admin dot model admin. And of course we could still do list display like we did before. And in this case, I want to have the name of the recipe and maybe the user, but I can also do something called read only fields and I can pass in the user in there. I can also pass in the timestamp and the updated field here. And so now I'm going to go ahead and add these in, save it. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at the admin again. So now if I scroll down, I actually can't change the user related to this recipe. Now in the long run, I actually don't want that in the admin. I just wanted to show you how cool it is. But now I can also see the timestamp and update it, which is nice. I can actually see what those values are. So let's get rid of that user inside of that read only field. Now, before I go much further, the other part of this is the user itself. Now, if I had a million users, this drop down thing would be ginormous. So, what I can do instead is use something called a raw ID field or raw ID fields and pass in the user here. So, this is actually a little bit more practical than a raw ID field. I refresh and now I can actually just look up the user by opening up a brand new tab, which definitely mirrors this right here. And that's really critical for managing users that are associated to any object. Like almost always you should do this. So that also means that inside of our article admin, I should have that exact same thing, right? And I will leave that in there. So now the question is, how about this recipe? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that in the admin now and click on it. Go to add a recipe. Notice we have this same problem. We have a drop down here of recipes and it just says recipe object one. Now there's a way to change that and make it a little bit more verbose, but this of course is a problem, right? So even if I had the name of it, there's a good chance that there's gonna be more than one thing called grilled chicken tacos, right? Um, especially if you have users that like tacos, there's gonna be a lot of them that have that. So it's gonna be hard to distinguish what the relationship should be to any given recipe. That's why I actually showed you the user one. That's really easy to extinguish because the usernames are gonna be unique across your entire project. And it's also easy to look up the user and see if there's some need for an association. So what we need is something a little bit better. We need a better way to manage our recipe ingredients at least inside the admin. And this is true even if it's just for our own website and we don't have like users at large adding things, but just us ourselves. And so what I want to do then is turn this not into a model admin, but into something called a tabular admin. So there's going to be recipe. Let's go ahead and just copy the model name and we'll call it recipe ingredient inline. It's admin tabular inline. And now I'll go ahead and declare the model itself, which in this case is the recipe ingredient. And inside of my model admin for the recipe, I'm gonna go ahead and do inlines equals to that. And so let's get rid of the register call for the recipe ingredient and just use the tabular inline. I save everything and now I refresh in a recipe. Now I can see that the recipe ingredients are options in here. But notice that it's like way off to the side here. So tabular inline is great for a number of things, but perhaps not for this model. But what I can do is I can also say fields so what are the fields that I'd want? Name, quantity, unit, 
and probably directions. So name and then quantity, unit, and directions. Okay, so we can save that and refresh. And you're like, okay, cool. It's still going off the page. It's still way too big. So there's another one that we can use that is like tabular, but it's just simply stacked. We save that. And now if I refresh in here, uh, it looks a lot better, right? So this is now a lot closer to something I might actually want on my ingredients. Now you might be like, well, why are there three in here? Why is there three empty fields? Well, um, that's just a feature of these inlines. They, they just come with three right off the bat. So you can actually say extra being zero. And what that means is you'll just have to press this little button right here, which is actually probably preferable for the most of the time. And so now that we have these stacked, what I don't need is to limit the fields. I can actually have all of the fields now. And that totally makes sense. Okay, so I refresh in here. And we take a look and what do you know? So one of the things that should be glaring to you here is the fact that the recipe field is no longer there for these recipe ingredients. So let's see this on the register. I'm gonna register it again, but now I'm gonna go ahead and give an ingredient. So I'll call this grilled and chicken, and then we'll give a quantity. And I'll say one half and pounds. Now, of course, I'm in the US and we use pounds. Uh, we use the imperial system, so bear with me on that. Uh, we will have conversion tools later. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and stay here. And so I've added this ingredient and it's related to this recipe model, okay? So let's go ahead and go back in to the recipes app, click on recipe ingredients, and now I see that recipe ingredient and notice the related field is added for us. I didn't have to add it, it's there, it's added, it's ready to go. Um, so that's one of the coolest things about these inlines here. Now, if you actually made a mistake with one of these inlines, well, then we should see what that error would end up being. Let's go ahead and take a look at what a mistake would be like, and we'll do from Django.contrib.auth import git user model. Now, this is how we get the actual model itself. This is the best way to do it, so just stick with that and say git user model. Of course, it is different than what we do in the model itself, right? In models.py. Everywhere else other than models.py, this is how you get the user model. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a class of user inline, and it's gonna be admin, and I'll just do tabular inline, and I'll give the model of this user, okay? So this user inline now, I'm gonna go ahead and add it in to the list of inlines that my recipe admin has, and I'll refresh in here, and it already doesn't work. Right. And so the actual error that I'm getting here is auth.user has no foreign key to recipes.recipe. .recipe. You're like, wait a minute. Yeah, it does. Uh, that's this right here. Now, this has to do with the hierarchy of these foreign keys. That's kind of the point. This is really the parent model. This is the highest model above the recipe ingredient, but one higher than that is actually the user. So the there is no way to actually have a foreign key to the this user right here. But what we could try is the reverse of this. So instead of a tabular inline for the user, we do a tabular inline for the recipe. So let's go ahead and try this out and we'll do admin.model admin. And again, it's gonna be the user. So I'll, go, I'll just do a list display being to user name. And then I'll do an inline to the recipe. So I'll just copy this stacked inline for now, and we'll just call it the recipe inline and tag this in here. Got the inlines there, and now admin.site.register, the user, and the, let's call this back to user admin. Okay, so we save that, and let's see if our server can run. And notice that it is already registered which is not surprising because in our admin, we've already been able to manage our users. So inside of any admin.py, we can actually do admin.site.unregister the user model. So I'm unregistering it up here and then re-registering it down here. So we can save that. I definitely do not need this user or recipe ingredient any longer. And I definitely won't use this user admin and recipe inline later. 
Um, let's get rid of this user inline here. Okay, so let's save it and let's refresh here. Okay, so I now have a refreshed admin. So let's go into our admin and notice the users is still in the same spot. But now if I click on it and click on any given user, if I scroll down, well, I should see recipes, but I'm not seeing recipes. I'm still seeing the actual, um, uh, just, just the user data. And so it should be in lines, not in line. So let's go and refresh. And if we scroll down, now I actually have recipes right on the user model itself. Now, I do not recommend overriding the user model in this way in the admin most of the time, right? There are times that you'll want to do it, um, but it's just nice to see that we can have this sort of hierarchy of models based off of these foreign keys. Now, this was meant to be an, a visual explanation for it. Now, what we need to do is actually see the code explanation for it by writing out some tests. So we'll actually write out unit tests for this um, to ensure two things. Number one, that it's working, but also two, that we understand this hierarchy of foreign keys. Uh, so back into the admin here, I actually do want to get rid of all of these things. I do not need them, and I do not think it's a great idea at this point. So refreshing in here, we're back to what I originally had uh, for the user admin. And then I have the just a single recipe admin now too with the data associated.